Hello and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. President Salarek Zodi today met and conferred with Gabon's President Ali Bongo on a host of bilateral and regional issues. Salarek briefed Bongo over the situation in Ethiopia, adding that the increasingly neocolonialist tendencies of some international organizations has been a source of public fury. Gabon will take the place of Tunisia in the UN Security Council. Niger and Tunisia have both been playing constructive role to promote Ethiopia's case to the international community, the president indicated. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is taking part at the third Turkey-Africa Partnership Summit in Istanbul, Turkey. On Friday, Prime Minister Abiy met with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in a bilateral meeting on the sidelines of the Turkey-Africa Partnership Summit. Quote unquote, the historical relations between our two countries have always been rooted in mutual respect. Our partnership continues based on constructive engagement the Premier said. Ethiopian forces have recaptured several towns from the retreating and heavily defeated TPLF forces, including Obo and Waldia in the north. The fall of Waldia to Ethiopian forces is monumental, given the strategic significance of the town located in North Wolozon, Amhara State. Ethiopia has been plunged into the war since November 2020 after a treasonous attack on a federal army camp in Tigray by the terrorist TPLF. Despite claiming advance on the capital Addis Ababa, the TPLF is losing the 13-month war that has left thousands dead. On Saturday, the Allied Ethiopian Army of National Defense Forces, Amhara Fano, Special Forces and Militia, as well as other paramilitary units, have managed to fully control Sanga, Siringa, as well as the towns of Weldia, Hara, Gowie, Robit and Kobo. Legasa Tulu, Minister of Government Communication Services, told journalists here today. The enemy force, which escaped from destruction and was fleeing, is being pursued by our allied forces, Legesa said. The fall of Waldia and Kobo means all of the North Wollo has now been freed from the grip of the TPLF after months of ravages and destructions. Starting late October, the allied Ethiopian forces have managed to make major territorial advances with several key towns falling into their hands. Meanwhile, the retreating TPLF army is being choked with no means of fleeing back to Tigray. They may not necessarily have a lot of financial capital, but they have knowledge capital. Give them incentives. To they are playing an incredibly beautiful, strong, enthusiastic diplomatic role. They're fighting and they are winning. And become not only the issue of Ethiopia, it has become the issue of Pan-Africanism.
Welcome back. A political science expert says Friday's special session and the proposal for international probing into Ethiopia's human rights is nothing but a new wave of arm-twisting tactics in the making. African countries backed by China, India, Philippines and several other Asian states have rejected the call by the European Union to create a team of experts to investigate human rights in Ethiopia. Habtamu Ashagri brings us up to speed. 21 of the 47 members, including the UK, Germany, Japan and South Korea, endorsed the call, but the entire Afghan representation of 13 members voted against the draft. Afghan members, together with some of their Asian and Southeast Asian counterparts, syndicated that the UN has long been serving as a stooge for the West. Ethiopia said it was extremely disappointed by the move and vowed not to cooperate, exposing that the mechanism was politically motivated. Ethiopia dismissed accusations of abuses and said it had already cooperated in investigations into the year old war. The West, which was disappointed by the findings of the joint investigation into alleged violation last month is supporting another probing, which Ethiopia says is a divorce scam to politically intervene in its internal affairs. The so-called special session provided a window of opportunity for the West to push for regime change by tarnishing the image of the democratically elected government under the guise of probing to rights violations. They are also working aggressively for the rebirth of a white supremacy. But however, the West and coordinated this scheme will never see the light of the day. Friends of Ethiopia have have stood by us, exposing the machinations by the so-called Human Rights Council. Eritrea, Philippines, Russia, Somalia, China and India among others rejected the proposal, arguing that Ethiopia is capable of solving its own problems. The scholar underlined that the time is critical to all African countries to come together to say no to Western encroachment. This proposal is not only targeting Ethiopia. The proponents want to intervene in the internal affairs of other African countries. Thus, it was high time that Africans stood together. The popular maxim, African solutions to African problems, reverberates across the continent. It is to be recalled that the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission has rejected the call by the EU, arguing that it goes against the 2021 Joint Human Rights Investigation Report made by the Commission and the United Nations Human Rights Commission. Thank you, President. Venezuela once more expresses serious concern at the growing selectivity and double standards. Ethiopians and friends of Ethiopia have always been baffled by the visible bias in Tigray-related stories published by some Western media outlets. These are among the news outlets that have the largest readership in the world. But sadly, prominent scholars have continued working against Ethiopia and being mouthpieces of the terrorist TPLF. Alex Diwal is considered one of the foremost experts on Sudan and the Horn of Africa. However, he has been one of the vocal sympathizers of the TPLF all through the 13-month long war to the neglect of his professional ethics and integrity. Jerusalem Betzaha has the details. One year on after this needless war was inflicted against the people of Tigray, let us hope, let us pray for wisdom compassion and justice. Alex DeWall is executive director of the Walled Peace Foundation and a research professor at the Felcher School at Taftas University. And he is considered as one of the foremost experts on Sudan and the Horn of Africa, particularly in investigating humanitarian crisis and conflict. However, Diol has for quite some time been showing his solidarity with the terrorist TPLF through denying atrocities of civilians, rape abuses of human rights and many violences that has perpetrated by the TPLF. Even the UN and other human rights groups have clearly reported the rapes and murders committed by TPLF force 
despite the pressure of the U.S. Department of State to do otherwise. But the all decided to ignore all of them completely. Not only this, one of the TPLF sympathizers, Alex Diol, had also information of the immense suffering Ethiopians endured during the 27 years of TPLF rule, but he opted silent. A glance at some of his remarks proves this. Diol has been shamelessly expressing his condolences to TPLF and making it look like the Ethiopian government committed atrocities against innocent civilians in Tigray. First of all, let me say something to the the people of Tigray, which is my condolences to you all for everybody whom you have lost over the last year. And anyone who has a heart must recognize the unspeakable suffering that the people of Tigray have undergone. Many of you, of course, have perished. Most have survived, but with great grief, pain and trauma. And it's a hurt and an injustice that is made worse by the silence and the indifference of many of those who are supposed to have responded in the international community. He also reiterates his recommendation for the TPLF too. To the leaders and members of the Tigray Defence Forces, you have won the respect of everybody. The doctrine of a just war has rarely had so clear an exemplar. Faced with the utmost cruelty and determination of your enemies, determined to crush your spirits and your bodies, you have resisted and resisted honorably. To the TPLF, you led Tigray at the time when the calamity broke and you followed the people out of that calamity. You must now be humble. You must be prepared, frankly, to admit your errors and to learn the necessary virtues of inclusion, of pluralism and of democracy. Diwol also condemned the UN not for sufferings of other Ethiopians, but only the TPLF due to the one-year-long war. Shame on you. Shame. Shame for your silence. Shame for your failure to stand up for basic humanity and for all the principles for which the United Nations was founded. Shame on you for your failure to stop starvation. Shame on you for failing to call out those responsible for inflicting it on the innocent. And shame on you for your appeasement of the perpetrators of the grossest crimes against humanity. Every crime prohibited under the solemn commitments of the United Nations. Moreover, in an article he wrote recently on Hartz's an Israeli newspaper he expressed his detestation vividly for the Ethiopian people and government. Particularly in his article, he urged Israel to put pressure on the UAE to end its military cooperation with the Ethiopian government. Many times, the government of Ethiopia stated that TPLF doesn't represent the people of Tigray, but surprisingly, the wall has been working aggressively to create animosity between Tigrayans and other Ethiopians. That explains why many keep asking if the wall is a scholar or a hired gun of the TPLF. A new wave of Western-led pressure is being exerted on Ethiopia amidst objection by some African nations. The Amnesty International came up with the concocted rights abuses in Western Tigray by Amhara forces. The international organization's report was released only hours before the UN Human Rights Council began a video conference special session on Friday to address what it called the grave human rights situations in Ethiopia. Connecting the dots, one can see that the new wave is aimed at finding a pretext to further pressurize Ethiopia with a fake genocide. In the following reportage, Goshu Meliso shades more light on this pressing matter.
The Amnesty International shamelessly depicted a picture of mass detentions, killings and expulsions of ethnic Tigrayans in western Tigray, an area claimed by the Amhara. Since failing to secure the area once the conflict began in November 2020, the TPLF is using the likes of the Amnesty as Trojan horse to put pressure on the government. The rights group pinned its hopes for the Trump up charge a satellite imagery, but sadly the imagery failed since it was an image taken months back for the same purpose. The rights group never uttered the word about ethnic Amharas targeted when the TPLF invaded the state and ransacked it. A month ago, the TPLF and its western allies tried in vain to come up with what was known as Humara Massacre. They put it in the back burner when the world seemed unwilling to buy it. The rights group's latest fake report seems to reawaken the Humara Massacre. In a coordinated attack, the EU's proposal aims to create an international commission of human rights experts on Ethiopia. But this is an open aggression as the following speech by Joseph Borrell of the EU proves it. It has been grief violation of human rights by both sides. The fight continues nearby the capital. Ethiopia is one of the issues that we have debated the most this year. And it is also one of my biggest frustrations because we were not able to react properly to the large-scale human rights violations. However, some are already voting against a European Union-backed resolution. These nations have indicated that the push to investigate the allegations of violations and abuses is an attempt to take over sovereign prerogatives. The proponents of this proposal must learn to respect and not preempt a sovereign state's prerogative to set up its own national accountability efforts and mechanisms to address human rights and humanitarian law violations. They must cease using the Human Rights Council for unilateral and deservedly self-important actions that hinder cooperative and constructive efforts to change the human rights situation situation on the ground. Instead, the proponents are weakening the Human Rights Council by turning it into an arena of condemnation and a judicial hold without due process instead of a body for engagement, respect for sovereignty and dialogue. Ethiopia's government has slammed the decision to hold the special session and has urged countries to vote against the draft text. The government made it clear that it will not cooperate with any mechanisms that may be imposed on it given this is a deliberate destabilization effort. ያማሪካ <laughs> France donated over 1 million doses of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccines to Ethiopia. This donation comes in addition to the 843,600 AstraZeneca vaccine doses already donated by France in July and October via COVAX in partnership with the African Union and its African Vaccine Acquisition Trust AVAT initiative for the second one. Committed to vaccine solidarity, France supports the import, important efforts of the Ethiopian government to accelerate its national COVID-19 vaccination campaign. These donations are part of a global commitment from the French government, which made COVID-19 vaccine doses sharing a key priority of its global response in order to help increase vaccine cover on a global scale.
In an array of destructions during its months-long invasion in the state of Afar, the terrorist TPLF group has looted and damaged 759 schools. The damage on school property in all of Afar is estimated to be slightly over 1 billion bir, says the Afar State Educational Bureau. This was disclosed when Minister of Education Burhanu Nagga made visits to the looted and damaged sites. Kataun Jani presents the file prepared by Sheggao Yematao. The Minister of Education, along with the federal and other state educational stakeholders, visited the destroyed schools. During the visit, Brahmana Gassa, the plots committed by the group to eliminate the generation are totally unacceptable. The Amitipial of the group during Earth's invasion committed looting and damaging on social institutions which served citizens. Schools are among the institutions which are badly looted and damaged by the terrorist group. In the state of Afar alone, the group has damaged over 759 schools. Some 65 of these are totally destroyed according to Afar Education Bureau. The group has caused many damages. The chairs and desks are used for firewood. Children in 21 districts no longer go to school since there is nothing left to entertain the teaching learning process. Head of the Afar State Education Bureau, Ali Mohammed Saad. The state has incurred a total loss of over 1 billion baht due to the destruction and looting. He added that awareness creation and rebuilding will be the top most priorities of the state. Brown, on his part, added that committing such destructive acts on a school clearly shows that the group does not care for the generation. The minister further called on Ethiopians to cooperate waiting the rebuilding process. And finally, in business, Germany has pledged 80.6 million euros financial support to Ethiopia. The finance minister, Ahmed Shide, today received German ambassador to Ethiopia, Stefan Auer, at his office. On the occasion, the two discussed ways of enhancing economic development cooperation between the two nations. Ambassador Auer expressed readiness of his country to extend 80.6 million euros financial support to Ethiopia. The financial grant is aimed at enhancing food security program, good governance, land resource utilization, agricultural mechanization and drought resiliency projects in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm.